Greetings, dear ones. I'm crying of magnetic service. All month long, we have been discussing one subject. And the subject is recovery. The recovery is an expression I gave some time ago. Explain now is those who are recovering seemingly from a coma. That's what it always meant. The year of recovery is what I called it last January. This year of recovery, because you like labels, truly is akin to coming out of a coma. And it's not just those who would watch a program like this. It's the planet. Slowly and differently, Many are starting to realize there are things around them that are different. They're feeling different. You might say they are seeing more of what has always been there. And they're also feeling they are now empowered to change it. And that's the big difference. The big difference for all of these things with humanity is the ability to feel that you can change it. Now, that also requires that you feel individually you might have a little more self-worth. All of this adds up to a higher consciousness being delivered to humans. Now, this higher consciousness has always been there. It's just a matter of did you see it? Did you see it and then you took it? You put it upon yourself. You awaken to a light that's shown upon it. Those are all metaphors. But that's the reality. A linear human being wants to believe that it was never there before and that you awaken, a light shines on it, an angel put it there, and you take it. And so there are layers of things that have occurred on the earth, you think, and you then wake up and take the things that were left for you. That's not the way it is. What if I told you that the hum human being and society in general, and there were cultures of higher awareness of spiritual consciousness way in the beginning, and that humanity actually devolved to what you see today? In other words, they became of lower consciousness with free choice. There was no conspiracy that did it. You did it all by yourselves. And your Akash proves it. A human race that invests in war over and over. That's what you do. Before you did that, you didn't. So something took place. So what I'm telling you is this. Higher consciousness, the idea of it, the existence of it, the awakening to it, has always been here. So what is happening right now is you're awakening to the past. You're awakening to something that was always there waiting to revive itself, to reemerge. And the beauty of that is this. Listen carefully. It's not a mystery. So many of the old souls that I am looking at night, right now and talking to, I will give you this information. As the light comes forward, and as you see this light, and you see that there are things around you you were unaware of before, your very Akash, that which you've experienced before and is inside you like a library, starts to activate. You wake up what you already knew. I'll say it again. You're starting to awaken what you already knew. That means there isn't much of a learning curve. You start to see the things around you, new processes, new ways, things like consciousness of compassion and kindness. You would say, well, well, humans are going to have to learn to use that because we haven't had much of it in the past. I'll tell you, yes, you did. You just lost it. Now you're getting it back. 
That is the term we have used in the past, mining the Akash. Now, mining the Akash, just like a miner does, is where you go in and dig out that which is already there. In your case, it's something that belongs to you. You've experienced it. The core truths of who you are, how God works with you, the great things that you can learn, be, do, shamanic energy, healing modalities, you lost so much. And now it's arriving again. And you start to pull it out of your akash, and it's almost like you look around and go, it's back. I knew that. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I knew that. Some profound healer may show up on this very show and give information that is so wonderful and so new. And you're going to look at it and go, it's not new to me. <laughs> I remember it. Other things may be given to you on a program like this that seem strange or, or mysterious or, or out there. But there are some of you who will recognize, yeah, but it's real. Because I've been there. I know it. This is the awakening. It's more than you think. How have you applied this to your life? How do you see what I'm saying to you for you? But most important, what does it mean from now on? Now here's where the lesson is today, tonight, even in the circle of 12. There's an expression that I have heard humans use called the undiscovered country. The expression is the future. Is it possible to actually discover the future if it has not happened yet? Oh, now we get esoteric. Psychologists love this. <laughs> and so do physicists. It begs many questions about dimensionality. Some will say, is it possible that our futures already exist and that as we move forward, they shift around and we select one or two or another? That's very linear. What if I told you this? Everything is happening together. Now, you've heard that before. What if time is a construct for you? You cannot get your head around that. It's not possible truly for a human to think the following. Past, present, future, all in one bag, and you're, you're sitting in the bag. Now, if that is true, and how could it be if humans have free choice? I will tell you that a, a part of it that you can understand is true. What you do today, in this moment, in this minute of your life, can do two things. It can actually change the past for you, your ancestors, for your Akash. We have talked about that. And number two, you can posture the future. Now, you can understand that. Even though you don't believe anything has happened yet, the potentials of all of it has already happened in some form of dimensionality. It's why we can face off with you and say things that are going to happen because the potentials are set like a snowball rolling down the hill. When it starts rolling due to the gravity and the laws of physics, you know what's going to happen. It's going to collect more snow, get bigger, and continue rolling. Now, is that somebody predicting the future? You want to say, stop the program. You can't predict what the snowball is going to do. You don't. You say, no, it's going to roll down the hill, even though it's going to happen in the future. It's the same thing I'm telling you. We can see the snowball of consciousness rolling down the hill. And what it hits is the darkness. <laughs> And it dispenses and dispels it. It changes humanity. It changes what you're going to do next. It changes what countries are going to do next. It changes the future 
out of war. It changes it so greatly that I'm telling you yet again, this is not going to be history repeating itself. This is not your grandfather's planet. It's your planet. The snowball starts to roll down that hill. And the future, I can tell you, just like the snowball, I can tell you, it's going to continue rolling in the same direction. And the direction is light. I want you to just stop for a moment. You might even put out your hand and say, thank you, spirit, for what is coming that I don't know about, that I can't conceive, no matter what I'm seeing on television. Thank you, Spirit, for things in the future, solutions that I cannot see, because that's where the snowball is going. Is that telling the future, or is it common sense? Become a little more multidimensional, dear ones, and I think you'll have the answer. Beautiful it is. You might even say an affirmation or two to solidify it to your own innate. I appreciate with gratitude what is going on with me. I may not be able to see it now. I may be miserable now. It's a mature old soul who can stop that even in misery and say, thank you, spirit, for loving me enough for what's coming. Thank you for loving me enough for what's coming. If you can do that, dear ones, that is called awakening to a higher consciousness and understanding a little more about God in you. Oh, thank you. And for all of those of you watching right now who are doing so perhaps even for the first time, God, Spirit, creative source, knows your name. You're not a victim of this planet. You're here magnificent on purpose. Can't you feel it? Dearly loved, I am in love with you. I am Cryon. And so it is. Hi, everyone. The short channeling you just saw from Cryon is just a sample of a great weekly 90-minute program called Healing Wednesday. Are you interested? I invite you to find out more at cryonmasters.com slash hw.